good afternoon or buongiorno posso dire, which is good day, and I'm welcoming you here, you here on behalf of Ceramic Tiles of Italy. We're really excited to be at Dwell and Design. It's our third year here, and we have um, we brought you a wonderful architect to talk about a project that we're very excited about. Before we get into the project, we thought we would just give you a little background on Italian tile. Ceramic Tiles of Italy is a brand that represents the a group of over 150 manufacturers currently exporting to the U.S. market. We have an exhibit right here at 1045 around the corner, which represents a small mixture of our tiles, just a taste. And then we have a list of dealers where you can find things in California and across the country. Um, I'm a fast-talking New Yorker that was actually born in Italy in Bologna, the tile region. So I'm very excited to work with Italian Tile. I've worked with the industry for over 20 years. And so I've been tracking trends and watching sort of what's been happening and coming out of Italy. And I'm always excited by what I see. So I thought before we got over to Hagi, we'd just kind of rapid fire, run through a couple, some slides of some of the points about Italian tile. Um, that kind of what I just mentioned about coming from Bologna and the over 150 companies, the Made in Italy brand. That's Bologna, which is a fantastic city and um, sort of the heart of the tile region. And then there's also tile produced in, Sic in Sicily, down in the Vietri coast, along the Amalfi coast. So that just kind of gives you a little sense of where we're all coming from. Chersai is our big international show for Italian tiles. So if you really love tile and materials and bathroom fixtures, you can come to Italy in the fall. It's a wonderful show and I've been going for years. And Hagi will be going this year with us. They'll be able to report back next year on it. Um, we have a card which we produce, which we think is really helpful. Alessia from our offices from Italy is in the back with it. It's called the top 10 kind of reasons why ceramics, I mean, it really speaks to Italian tile, but ceramics in general would be considered a sustainable material. So we took each one, and I'm just going to really quickly show you. Um, our, our industry is like all the manufacturers are really close to each other, and they've been developing products, so they've really got to be mindful of the environment because they're living in, and, and working in that region and have been for decades. So they are really responsible about the use of materials, the recycling of the post and pre-consumer waste. They are looking at ways to save energy. Tile is very resistant, so it will last for a long time. It won't, if there's a fire, it can actually reduce issues with fire. It's recycled, so that's about the recycled content. There's, there are companies right now that are working with um, old TV screens and monitors from, team, from, from computers and actually using the glass from those industries and mixing it in with the plate powders and porcelains. Um, you'll see all sorts of amazing porcelains in our exhibit, but just generally porcelain technology is so evolved it's so strong, you can use it indoor and out, and it's also got a real recy high recycle, 40 to 60% in most cases of recycled content. So for LEED and for other certifications, it comes in, you know, it's it can become very important. It's recyclable at the end of life cycle. Tile is an inert material, so you can put it back out in the backyard, it'll break down back into the environment, and it's not, a, it's not going to actually, it'll just kind of naturally kind of revert back to nature. They're doing a lot with packaging as well in terms of using recycled materials. It's totally no VOC, so it's non-toxic. So when you're talking to clients or thinking about ceramics, it's something that you can put it in. It's not going to have any issues with any kind of toxic uh, gassing. And that's also important for lead. Um, it's actually energy saving and it will hold heat and it will stay cool in summer. And we've been as an industry watching as across Europe and the world, people are doing more exterior cladding with tile, which allows you to hold heat, you know, again, have energy saving properties. Um, there are some companies buying person carbon you know, uh, credits. We've been seeing these photovoltaic panels that are actually attached to the ceramic or porcelain surface. So you can actually get tiles that have the, the photovoltaic panels actually on top of it for roofing or, so there's, you know, there's just so much sort of focus on technology and on sustainability across the whole industry. Um, just when you look at a life cycle analysis, ceramic tile versus other materials in general, it's got a very, when you think that it will last for 50 years and more in many cases, the cost actually is so, so reasonable when you consider it across other materials. The maintenance is unbelievably low for ceramics, so you don't have to you know, pre -treat, you know, treat any surfaces. You can just basically clean them with a simple cleanser. And then adaptable, that if you had a certain problem over the years, you could just kind of spot repair um, an area. We were talking to the hospitality and you know, hotel um, industry as well about actually even thinking about tile in the bedroom because of issues like insects and you know, like bed bug problem, all these other interests in terms of 
sustainability, but also maintenance, that it's a material that should be kind of considered in a new way. So as an industry, we're working together to, to kind of get that message out there. So that just kind of, and then I thought it was on the back of the green card, you'll see some of those Euro, you know, the different labels, there's LEED, there's the Euroflower, there's ISO. What do those really mean to Americans that are under specifying or looking at ceramics? So that kind of, our card sort of explains it because the Europeans, again, have one, which is the Euro label, which is about products, and then they have an ISO rating, which is about manufacturing and processes and how they're actually producing the tiles in their, in their, in their plants. So this kind of sums up their certifications. And then we just thought real quickly, because Hagi's going to show you an amazing, exciting project that's out in Hawaii that he created for us. Um, well, he created and then we found out about. Um, but we thought we'd just kind of fly through some current trends. So just to show you some fun looks. This is like a wood look. but So tile is really great for inside and out. And because, again, it's porcelain, and the, the porcelains have a very low water absorption rate, so they can be used in settings where they can just flow in and out of spaces. So we just did a little, just some pictures from some different, each, each one that's a manufacturer name. This is a, a wonderful architect that spoke with us last year, Michael P. Johnson. He's used it all over Arizona, inside and out. This is kind of a new fun trend that we're seeing. It's kind of urban, you know, there's concrete looks are popular, but they've also been playing with like graffiti looks. And this, this designer took tile and took the back of the tile and glazed it and cut it up and put it on a mesh. And then these are just some kind of fun, more artistic sort of uh, takes on it as an art form. And this is just a little survey of some recent stuff. The industry is just so active. And again, if you ever came to Trisai, you'd be just blown away by the new designs we see each year. Size Revolution, this is a really exciting um, new development, which are three meter by one meter tiles that are really, really super thin that can go over an existing um, substrate, or if you have an old floor that you want to go over it, you can. So this was a Lay is the manufacturer, and Patrick Norger created this pattern for them. It's another company that's doing them. So they're super thin, they can be cut easily. And this is just showing it as an exterior. Little tiny mosaic. So our formats are, are getting really big. They're giant rectangles. We have a 48 by 48 square um, inch square there. And then last one is faux finishes. You know, they're playing with textures from like uh, damask to wood looks to stone looks. Oops, slate. Animal prints. That's a, you know, a lot of them, they'll, 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 they're so good with the technology of the way they're printing the surfaces or silk screening them or creating them so that you can get boxes and you won't have a repeat of the same pattern in over hundreds of them. Chalk. So then that brings me to Haggy. So I just wanted to say, in addition, we have a design competition that we run every year. It's about the 17th year. And we ask designers and all of North American architects to submit projects where they use tile in an exciting or fabulous manner. And then the winner, we do it all online. So the, the site is tilecompetition.com. And we have a card over there um, at our booth. And basically, you can do it online to submit some photos and description of your project and how you used Italian tile. And then our jury, if we select you, you get to come to Italy to Tersai with us with a delegation of editors. And Evie Cohen is a, a, from Interior Design is an alumna of our trip for many years. She's been coming. But um, you'll come to the trip with us, and then we will also give you a $4,000 check and, some, uh, and a check for your distributor contractor team, 1000 for them to split. And we bring you to coverings, which is a show that we work, um, we have in the States for Tile, which will be taking place in Orlando next year in the spring. So, it's a really, really cool, very, you know, there's not, there's no real cost for you to submit. So any great projects that you have um, used Italian tile in, we'd love to learn about them and publicize them internationally at our association and through our, our network. We're here today from, we're, we're here because of the Italian Trade Commission and the Italian Association. And so we welcome you to come back to our booth and get our promotional materials. And now finally, Haggy, so that was a long intro. It, we found Haggy, as I said, Haggy Bellsberg from Bellsberg Architects here in LA. So, hey, Santa Monica. I'm sorry, I talked too much. Okay, here's Haggy. So thank you, guys. I'm not a fast talking, uh, is this on? I'm not a fast talking uh, person from uh, New York, but I'm a slow talking Jew from Santa Monica, so I'm going to talk very quickly. Um, the, the case study I'm going to present today is one that we did in, in uh, Kona. It's, uh, it's, um, the house is situated right over here off of this lava flow, and um, 
and uh, this, this whole environment is, is quite active, quite moving uh, constantly, and there's, there's so many unpredictabilities. However, the most important aspect in this project is how toxic this area is. It's, it's uh, the water, uh, the rain becomes as acidic, the, uh, the air is very, uh, can be acidic, so the materials that you choose are not only, uh, if you have an interest in sustainability, uh, not only have to be very, very uh, strong, but they also have to really take, uh, take into uh, account the uh, occupants and their vulnerabilities as well. Um, what we did on this project was we really studied the island, the island uh, uh, conditions, the wind, the surf, the uh, sun, and uh, really came, came to an idea to really bring those materials from the island and some materials off of the island to play. The uh, uh, most importantly for us obviously was the lava and the lava formations and how we get to use those. The other is the view. We had beautiful views of the mountains and far off views to the ocean. Sketching up, we, the, the lots were, were orth, uh, we went off of the orthogonal lot. We pointed uh, a, a large gallery, one end of it towards the ocean, the other element towards the volcano. Um, and then started building up our, our pods, or should I, room, rooms from there. Different aspects of the house off, set off of one gallery. Um, and then we wanted it to be off or from the earth. So um, here you have the final plan. I'm going to go through it very quickly. We have the kids' pod, the guest pod, the family pod, the master bedroom pod, and a uh, multimedia uh, or a media room with, uh, with an indoor-outdoor gallery. The indoor-outdoor materials were exceedingly important. We needed to do sustainable, uh, we wanted to do as a personal interest of our office to do sustainable materials. Our client was not so interested in that aspect. So the question to all of you as designers or people who are interested in design, how do you incorporate sustainable materials without making a sustainable building? You pick and choose. And being in Hawaii, you don't get to just walk you know, to your nearest sustainable market and get to take something off the shelf. Everything is... Uh, either imported or, and there, and there you have to take into account the obvious carbon footprint. Uh, for us, um, f uh, formations we use as the first Im uh, impetus, and uh, that is where we used our, where we got our idea for the cut stone or, or the lava rock. And here you see the, the Italian porcelain tile that we used. Um, again, we, and we also used recycled teak, uh, not local recycled teak, but recycled teak, um, and really that, that was the emphasis, is to pick and choose as many materials as we could, crap, uh, before, losing time, before, um, be, uh, so, that, so that it was really a um, uh, sustainable effort and not a, com a holistic, sustainable approach. The, the Italian uh, flooring, for example, was fantastic for us because, like I mentioned earlier, we have acid rain. We had, uh, uh, they call it VOG, which is a mixture of, of, of volcanic atmospheric stuff and, and fog. And it's, it's nasty stuff. But what's more nasty than, than all the environmental area is kids with, um, with suntan lotion, which love to put it all over themselves and roll around in the house and outside of the house. So we needed something that would be indoor, outdoor, and you didn't use harsh chemicals to clean it up. So we came across the Italian porcelain tile that also thankfully matched the, uh, the stone quite nicely. Here it is, and you'll see it go right in and out of the water, the, um, the recycled teak and the, and the, um, and the stone. Um, the stone was stacked in, in, uh, and cut in configurations that would offset uh, the orthogonal grid. There it is, trying to uh, trying to evoke some sense of uh, coming from the landscape, and then we wanted to incorporate other items. Uh, you know, we, there are all too often iconograph iconographic elements that are used in Hawaii that are quite literal. We didn't want to be as literal, but our clients still wanted us to incorporate some ideas. So here, the the grass skirt was uh, reintroduced into the living room, uh, CNC milled uh, into the ceiling picks up the reflective lighting, we carve these uh, and, and basically put them into the, we, we did a computer model of them, uh, carved them and, and, and tiled them onto the ceiling. Oops. And there's the final. You can see the tile going in and straight out into the pool area. And a bit of a close-up shot. 
and of course, um, all the bedrooms of all the pods open up completely into, into, the, uh, into the landscape. Again, we used um, different carvings. This is the master bedroom. Here we used, um, this is a um, simple, simple glue lamb beams. We took the glue lamb beams, um, articulated them. They're palm frond-esque um, uh, icons and, uh, and used them as a screen between a, a smaller hallway and the main uh, master bedroom. And then you can see the, the swimming pool for us also encir is encircled by the tile, and so is the um, and so is some of the uh, exterior uh, seating area. Here we use uh, simple dark darker elements to be able to absorb sunlight. It's quite effective, and um, the pool is a salt pool. And the tile you just wipe off any uh, any buildups. No, uh, nothing else needed. There it is without the the padding. and a more serene look. There's the tile itself. We use the, uh, the recycled teak everywhere, uh, not only on the walls, but on the ceilings as well. The pool is not an indoor-outdoor pool, but we bring it in very, very close into the living room, allowing it to gently spill over, also allowing some reflectivity and uh, sound. There's only a two and a half inch gap here that it spills into. That's the tile there as well. And finally, we were able to convince the clients to give us an array of photovoltaic panels to offset. They're only there a couple weeks a year, so we were able to offset the, uh, the uh, when they're not there, the electricity, so that it really is a, a zero. When they're there, obviously, they generate uh, more than the panels are able to provide us, even though we have a very, very large array, both on this pod and the one opposing. Uh, and, then, and then more images of the pool going into the landscape, into the lava bed. And then um, other, one last uh, iconographic playful element we used was they asked us for an entry pavilion. We looked at uh, Hawaiian basket weaving. And from there, we came up with um, this kind of inverted basket that we used as, a, as an entry element that guides you. Um, it was off the gallery and a little bit more of a garden pavilion with a um, with porcelain tile around it. These are, uh, that's back basically plywood that, uh, uh, that we had with uh, MDF panels in between. There's the entry with water around it. And um, wow, I made it with seven minutes. Thank you so much for listening.